This is Angelus TV, God's voice that brings hope to the nations. Praise the Lord and thank you very much for remaining faithful, for keeping on listening to the broadcast that we bring forth every morning. Brethren, as you know, that teaching on forgiveness is just blessing people and I'm receiving a lot of compliments and people just saying how much this teaching has dealt with them and brought healing in their lives, brought healing in their relationships, brought healing in their bodies and in their communities and in their churches and in their families. This teaching is very important and as I said, honestly friends, there is no heaven without forgiveness and there is no joy in family without forgiveness because people who get married are not perfect people they are not angels you don't always know what the other wants you don't always uh, interpret things the way the other person interprets so the need for us to forgive the need for us to repent, the need for us to ask for forgiveness is so high in order for us as a community of people to continue enjoying peace. And Jesus Christ the Lord taught quite a lot on this subject. I want us to read from his mouth. We just want to hear what he says in Matthew chapter 5. And verse 23 and 24. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. For if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You know, this is a very high level of holiness. A very, very high level of holiness and purity. Jesus says, if you are going to give an offering in the, in the temple, you are going to give an offering in the house of the Lord, and as you get onto the altar, you remember that there is something you have against a brother or there is something that a brother has against you leave your offering there go and be reconciled with that friend before you come and give your offering in other words jesus is saying your greatest offering is your brokenness your ability to forgive those who have wrong wronged you your ability to ask for forgiveness where you have wronged others. That is the sacrifice that the Lord is very much interested in. Friend, your sacrifice will not touch God if your heart is full of bitterness, resentment, and, and, and lack of forgiving. If you are unforgiving, if you are this kind of person that holds other people, that keeps the record of wrongs suffered. I want to assure you, beloved, your prayers cannot be received on the altar of God. And remember, Jesus Christ talks about this. You know, he, when he was teaching us in chapter 6 of this same book of Matthew, he says, when you go to pray, let your prayer be modeled after this. First of all, begin with worship. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as being done in heaven. And then he says, okay, then from there you ask for your needs, present your needs. But then he says, you must remember to ask the Lord to forgive you for your wrongs, just as you forgive those who have wronged against you. So forgiveness is very important and it's a two-way traffic. Go seek for forgiveness when if, when you realize you have hurt people. Number two, be willing to forgive people. Be willing to go and forgive people. Don't just wait for people to come and ask for forgiveness. Go and forgive people. 
And sometimes it is not very easy. I know of people who are, there are people who are so hard-hearted that they cannot even receive forgiveness when they are given. In, I think it was 1999, uh, I had a brother who did me a lot of harm. And uh, under normal circumstances, people would have thought, uh, and whatever, what people wanted was, what one, people, many people would have wished was for me to remain uh, distanced from this brother and hating him and not in any way showing compassion. But I sat down and looked at it. And I looked at the words that Jesus said on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And so I forgave this brother. I sent word to someone to talk to him and he couldn't. But one day, somehow it happened we were in the same house. We, 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 we were on, mission, on the mission and we met in the same place. And I just want, called him aside and said, hey, brother, I wanted to talk to you. And I said, brother, you know, the things that happened that time, were, you, they were very hurting to me. But you are my brother. I don't want to hold bitterness against you. So I have called you to forgive you. The man went berserk. He insulted me even the more. But I told him, do you know what, brother? I have forgiven you. So he rejected forgiveness. And the, the, I want to give this example to show you the pain that comes when someone tells you, I have forgiven you, and you reject it. You put coals of fire on your head. I'm telling you, this brother suffered. It took him several other years, could be about four or five years, for him to realize, because things did not happen for this brother. He, he, he could plan to do something and almost everything just collapsed. Nothing could happen. So one day we were, I was doing some ministry somewhere with uh, uh, evangelists and ministers, uh, people who are Christian um, ministers from the military of Kenya, from uh, KDF. And we were deep in the villages in Bungoma doing ministry. And then I, one morning I hear, I see people, you know, organizing seats outside there and they call me and I see this brother has come and they say, hey, brother, we have come here, brother Michael, because of our brother. Our brother uh, acknowledges that he, he did you a lot of harm. And when you wanted to forgive him, he even insulted you the more. And I told him, I, I laughed because, you know, they were thinking that they, it, it would require a lot of convincing for me to forgive. Honestly, to forgive someone, does it require any convincing? It doesn't require any convincing because that is how a Christian should be. To forgive people, to forgive even those who remain in Nagi, who remain, you know, so negative against us, you just have got to forgive them. Because as Jesus said, they don't know what they are doing. Now, don't judge people from your knowledge. What you know is not what they know. Like, I would have expected this brother, because he's a minister of the gospel, to know what I knew. I knew. But, he, but he did not. So, the, the, I see people in the military, the military friends uh, sitting us down early in the morning, even before breakfast. And I mean, I laughed and I said, is this what you are talking about for me to forgive my brother here? And I stood up. And I said, my brother, you are wasting time. This man is forgiven. And I went and hacked him and I told him, brother, you remember that day? In fact, I forgave you in March of, of 1999. Then I, I think it was in August of the same, same year when we met in the house of Pastor so-and-so. I forgave you. It is you who rejected forgiveness. But now that you have received it, brother, it, it gives me peace. And friend, it was so amazing. So I want you to know that forgiving people is not, you know, you, you don't forgive people because they ask for forgiveness. You forgive them because it is for your good. You, they deserve that kind of forgiveness. And it's important for you to forgive, to forgive them so that people may enjoy peace and may enjoy the happiness and the blessing of God upon their lives.
So we give God all the praise and all the glory. I want to encourage you to be a people that forgive others. I want to encourage you to realize that God doesn't recognize your ministry if you do not forgive other people. I'm telling you the truth. What is the use of you walking around talking, saying that you are a preacher of the gospel, pre moving around preaching the gospel about God to forgive people and you are not willing to forgive people? Who told you that they must wrong you to this level in order for you to forgive them? Forgive people including those who have maligned you, those who have assassinated your character, those who have moved around to scandalize you. Forgive them. Pastors and ministers, those who broke the church and went with half of your congregation, those who stole from you, those who have just forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Thank God you are you know who you are you know that you are born again and the calling of God and the blessing of God over your life will never be stolen by anyone Dear Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus You are such a great and awesome God Father I'm just giving you my heart this morning and I'm blessing your holy name God you have reminded us that if we have anything against our brother and we go to give an offering, we should leave the offering on the altar and go and be reconciled, make peace with our brother before we continue and proceed with the offering. So Lord, I'm just praying that this morning, this teaching enables families to experience reconciliation, corporations to experience reconciliation and peace, forgiveness to flow in the families and in and to bring healing to the people of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more of such uplifting Christian content, please click subscribe. Click the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.